Uh, if you count the, the competition speech from not your th third speech. I'm going to warn you guys before I even start, this is going to get a little bit audible, a little bit loud right here in the beginning, but just stick with me, all right? So I want all of you to imagine you are in preparation for what will be the Battle of Agincourt. You are an English soldier, and you know the facts. You are outnumbered, and you are outmade. You and your soldiers are demoralized, but the French are rallying, and they are coming to kill you. But then, your leader, King Henry V, comes before you and he says this, We few, we happy few, we bend of brothers, for he today that sheds his blood with me shall be my brother, be he ne'er so vile this day, shall gentle his condition. And gentlemen of England, now abed, shall think themselves accursed they were not here, and hold their manhoods cheap whilst any speaks of those who fought upon St. Crispin's Day. I told you. <laughs> you see, soldiers surrounded the king, shouting doubt. We can't do this. We're all going to die. And the king responded softly, I don't care. But the glory is not within the victory. The glory is within dying with, for my brothers. So I haven't done an icebreaker yet, and I figure it is about time. That speech I just recited was from Henry V, one of Shakespeare's history plays. And I open with that speech because I resonate with the king. King Henry was a great public speaker, as well as a man who was willing to allocate all of his resources necessary in order to accomplish his goals, even when the odds towered against him. I'm here to tell you that I have faced the odds my entire life. I faced the battle versus adversity every day. But I promise in life's end, I intend to win. I was born in Riverside, California, August 10th, 1994. Remember that birthday? I moved from there to several different states, including Maryland, Nevada, and Florida. By age five, I'd already taken a road trip from coast to coast of our great nation. My childhood was overshadowed by an ugly divorce and a custody battle. Life forced me to grow up pretty quickly. By age 11, I knew a lot of things that preteens probably shouldn't know. I knew how drugs could rip apart a family. I knew how lust stabbed love in the heart. I knew how laziness burned dreams to the ground. My father and my soon-to-be mother fought endlessly for my sisters in my custody, and eventually my biological mother gave in. She surrendered me. This act teaches me every day that parenthood does not end with birth, rather it goes on until the day you die. It is because of that fact that when I become a father, I'm going to retain that title. I'm not going to lose it like my biological mother, Christina, did. I moved into a loving household with my mother, or soon-to-be mother, and my father. I'm going to tell you something. I put that woman through hell in high school. She would push me and push me, work hard, Ryan, work hard, and all I'd do is push back. But one day, she sat me down and she said this, Ryan, I know I'm hard on you, but I had a saying from when I showed horses. The ones I whipped, <clears throat> excuse me, the ones I loved the most, <laughs> I was about to flip that around. The ones I love the most, I whip the hardest. That woman loves me. I'll tell you what. <laughs> By age 18, she offered to adopt me, and I graciously accepted. That woman is and always will be my mother. My, mother, my, excuse me, my father was similar in his motivational tactics. He, he liked to punish me a lot by making me do push-ups. Really prepared myself for this experience. But one day, because of my lack of work ethic, he told me to drop and do 100 push-ups. Now, I knew I couldn't do them, but I attempted, dropping to the floor about like 50. And I said, Dad, I can't do it. And he told me to restart, so I tried again, reaching about 30. And I cried. I bawled. I was on the ground. It was pathetic. And my dad said, Ryan, I've heard of women picking up cars to save their children. You can't even give me 100 push-ups? I hid my face in shame. I couldn't even look at the man. But then he said, Ryan, this is life. 
It's going to beat you down. It's going to try to keep you on the ground, but you have to keep pushing. I'll never forget that moment and the evanescent motivation that I received from it. Trust me, it was there. But I recognize the fact that the only reason I've made it this far is because of my parents. And I really realized that fact starting my first year here at the Citadel. I had a pretty hard year, I won't lie to you, but it's not the physical battle like the classes before you talk about, the real knob year. It was emotional. It was mental. I thought about giving up many times. I thought about throwing in the towel, going home, back to California. Wow, that'd be a great time. I remember one day I was sitting in my room alone with my Bible in my hands and I was crying. And I said to myself, I am alone. It's a really terrible place to be. But believe it or not, I heard a faint voice respond to me and it said this, you are not alone. I turned to a page in my Bible where my mom underlined the verse, 2 Samuel 22, 35. He prepares my hands for war. I can bend the bow of bronze. I was invigorated, and I fought through the, that, fought through the doubt, fought through the discouraging thoughts. Now, here I am, 13 days from getting my band of gold. I've shed painful tears in my life, and I felt those tears roll down my face. But I tell you, I'm not going to give in. For just like King Henry V, my heart is in the trim. My ambition is my lifeblood. And no matter what circumstances or what series of unfortunate events may be, I will have immaculate autonomy, and I will be great for my God, for my family, and for my country. Thank you.